This is Time for Tomorrow by Sharpened Quill. The moon was a quarter of the way through the night sky, and as round as an orange. Its pale, milky light shone over Equestria, with the subtle sadness of a lonely heart. Yet this night it wasn't Luna who was pulling the moon through the sky. Celestia was keeping an eye on its course. That single day had replayed so many times over the pony civilians were worried that they may never see the beginning of tomorrow. In a cloud house over Ponyville, an aged Rainbow Dash was sitting looking at a clock. This clock showed not only the time, but the date also, which currently was at twenty three four ninety. It's always the twenty third of April, always. Sighing, the cyan mare looked over at her wonderbolt outfit. The bright blue material had faded over the years, leaving it a dull sort of gray. However, it somehow remained uh, its regal stature, an impressive edge remained, the work of rarity lingering on the clothing, although the pony herself was gone. Only Twilight, Pinkie Pie, and Spike, and Rainbow now remained of this previous group. Three of the elements had gone, and were in another world. Rainbow wondered if they would have been able to make sense of what had gone wrong with time. On the moon, an empire was rising. Luna sat on a throne of stars, surveying her newly formed army from on high. Her sister's act had gone on for long enough. Celestia had absolutely no right to go about changing time. Every pony knew that they were living the same day over and over. It had gone on for a few months, and had progressed way too far to be a joke. Her sibling had obviously flipped for some reason. Luna had known ever since the White Goddess had taken control of the Lunar Cycle. I stand before you, my lunar army. We are strong, and I shall lead you forward to retake the moon's power. I am your superior. Is this understood? Below, the large group of armored stallions roared in answer to her question, clanking their helmets against their several silver breastplates, some even singing the old equestrian battle hymns. Be ready to fight! The princess of the night turned and spoke to three guards closest to her. Inkblot, shiny opal, darkened steed, you will come with me to confront my sister. The others will come later, if Celestia will not see sense. I doubt this highly, but tell the commanders to be prepared anyhow. All three ponies bowed and ran over to their superiors. Once the orders were understood, they appeared suddenly at her side. Are you all ready? Yes? Good. Then we shall teleport to wherever my sister is. I do so hope I do not have to wage war. A deep blue light surrounded the four peacemakers, and they were shunted from one world to another in a split second. It was a nauseating journey. Ink's blo Inkblot's indigo face turned a sickly green as her hooves touched down on a different ground. I am never, ever doing that again. The room they had arrived in was lit only with an oil lamp of very small proportions. It cast a quiet light upon the white alicorn in the corner and the bed beside her. Luna was shocked to see Twilight Sparkle, dulled with age, sleeping underneath the duvet with about five drips and a heart monitor connected to her. Her gray mane covered most of her lilac face, and the Princess of the Sun was sat stroking it. The monitor's steady beeps were coming to be few and far between. A white muzzle pointed in the direction of the intruders. Luna! Luna, help me! She's dying! My twilight sparkle! My dusk glitter! She's going to be gone soon! I can't let her go! Everything made sense now. If the day could happen over and over, then Twilight wouldn't have to die. The day would begin again, and with Celestia's student brought back to life. It was a crude sort of immortality that the white alicorn had fashioned, especially for the lilac mare. Sally, you can't do this. But why can't I? The ponies out there have lives to lead. Reliving the same day over and over isn't a life. It's like a prison cell. No! Shocked at the violent atmosphere in the room, the three guards shifted uncomfortably. For all the years they had spent training, the raw emotions of a princess with incredible power was nearly all too much. 
They all knew of the hot temper of the sun. Sally, this is what you call abusing your power. You cannot just see ponies as your chest pieces. Well, I am, and you cannot stop me. I control the sun. I could burn off this whole planet. Don't you dare speak to me of loyalty, nightmare moon. Fine, be that way. With a quick wink and a grin in the direction of her workers, Luna was shrouded once again in her magic and went off without a trace. Celestia felt a raw and salty tear trickle down her glorious white fur. Who was her sister to push her around and tell her to essentially kill her own student? Anyway, there was no world in which she would give her twilight up. The dusky scent of the gray mane filled the air and brought forth a joy which no pony could ever hope to explain. Her deep purple eyes shone with a raw beauty even a goddess could not deny. How could such wondrous life be allowed to pass? I would darken the sun for you. I have changed time so I may never lose you, Twilight Sparkle. Be happy. I am happy. The unicorn's eyes closed slowly, causing the white mare to whinny in fear as the beeps from the heart monitor grew further and further apart. Oh, no, you don't. Don't you even consider giving up now? A slight jolt of golden magic made the monitor run smoothly again. That was close. Pr 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 princess Turning toward the door, the princess saw a younger version of Twilight stood beside her sister. The small unicorn's eyes were full of wisdom and terror as she surveyed the scene before her. Luna was smiling calmly. The little student was her special attack move. Princess Celestia, what's going on? Oh, my. That's me, isn't it? I look awful. So old. Ready to move ahead. There was a pregnant pause as every pony processed what was going on before them. Princess, is what Luna says true? Yes. If Luna says that I have caught the whole world in one day so you could live, then that is the truth. Two blazing violet eyes met those of the white mare, and then those of the knight's guardian. Inkblot, shiny opal, and darkened steed left the room out of respect and confusion, closing the door silently on the awkward moment inside Celestia's chamber. Princess, you don't have to do this for me. I do. My heart has suffered too much loss already. I need you. A violent hoof touched the white wings of the sorrowful tutor tightly, lightly, in a soothing manner, befitting of a first-class spa worker. Two pairs of eyes met, and a connection was made between student and teacher. Only this time, it was the student doing the teaching. I know all you want to do is save me, but this is all wrong. I'll always be there in you, even when I go. There's a little bit of magic in death that means every pony remains within some pony else. I learned that when my mom passed on. She's with me, Twilight gestured towards her heart. She's with me in here. Trust me, I'm never ever letting you go. I'll be in your heart for eternity, Celestia. Today has gone on long enough. A small tear trickled down a violet cheek. It's time for tomorrow. The tolling of the midnight bells rang joyously across Equestria, and the light of the full moon showered the chamber with a white glow. Taking her time, Celestia removed all the drips from her student's forelegs and turned off the heart monitor. Luna couldn't find words to speak. Her eyes were red and empty of emotion as her sister did the bravest thing she had ever seen a pony do. The time had come, and, smiling, the dying mare said two words. Good night, Celestia. And she was gone. Good night, my dear friend. Good night. Dusky nights and evening showers, shining rubies and sweet young flowers, an eye for an eye, a heart for a heart, the twilight's end, the morning's start, belief beyond the lover's dance, the willing heart that takes a chance, a newfound life, a brand new day, the mind that will, the mind that may, bravery beyond compare, the ifs, the buts, the neverwhere. The short, perhaps, an empty tear, 
the open door, a lack of fear, a little piece of unknown sorrow. Goodbye, sweet day. It is tomorrow.